All right, all right, y'all. Today we're going to be doing our buildings overview. So I'm just going to be going through all of the buildings, uh, giving a brief description, maybe some tips or tricks. Um, some of the buildings I'll be doing a separate video later, so we'll come back and do a deeper dive into them. Uh, this is just a quick explanation over what all the buildings are, are used for. So first of all, we will start with our main hall. Uh, this is going to be your biggest building. It de uh, determines all the rest of your buildings. So you can see I'm 31. People call this C31, City 31. Um, so none of the rest of my buildings can go above 31. Uh, they're all stuck there until I get to 32. Uh, inside of our main hall, we can hit the details to see that when you upgrade this, uh, you get a gather speed boost. If you get your more info, you can see all the boosts for all the levels. Uh, you can see it caps out there at 17, C17. Um, coming back, we will hit the next one, which is upgrade. So this will just take you to your upgrade screen, which lets you upgrade your main hall, tells you all the requirements. So. Uh, you can see that I meet the requirements, but I have two buildings being built at the moment, and I don't have all the resources, uh, for especially uranium, so I'll have to wait on that. Obviously, they give you a little uh, jump there to go buy some resources. They know that you're out. Um, coming back, the city info tab. Uh, this just gives you an overview of your city. Some of this can be found in the garage as well. Uh, also in the stats screen, uh, you can see your resource output, your uh, troops, your battle power, some of your distribution, your army details, uh, just quick info about your city right here. Uh, if somebody asks you like what's your equipment power or your officer power or something, uh, this is a quick uh, place to look. Also if you're looking to see which uh, resource you gather the fastest that's posted right there. Uh, next in our main hall, City Buff. So you'll be using this screen uh, to put on peace shields, also to check if you have a current gather bonus or if you have a current um, production bonus. Uh, sometimes I'll use this to set up my urgent fleets um, and you can put on your other boosts here as well. Um, this is the quickest way, say if you get a notification and you log in, you click here, 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 and you've got a peace shield and whoever's trying to attack you can't attack you. It's quicker than going back over to this screen and then coming here. So if you log in, tap through, come right here, put on a peace shield. Um, and the last one's our decoration screen. Um, this just lets you put your decoration on your city so other people can see how fancy you are. I particularly like this Maple Warrior one. I think it's the best. Cha. Um, I think that's about it for the main home. Just uh, it's your main building and it dictates everything else. So make sure you're rushing your main hall levels to get your big power spikes at uh, 19, 22, 24, 26, 30, 34. Um, I guess that's about it for the main hall. Next, we'll jump over to the city hall. So the city halls, we're going to be uh, finding your daily reward at, tracking your progress to get your reward packs. Um, some of these you can click to jump you right to it is kind of useful if you need to go to your ruins, um, which I've already done, or if you want to go to power ore, you can quickly choose power ore right there. Um, you can also use your invitations from here. So if you're sending out invitations and you have friends playing and they're getting you bonuses, this is where you'll track all that. Um, this is where you can send your invitations out and see what all you've gotten. I don't have any invitations, but this is where you would have done it. This is also where you track your monthly card. 
So if you're buying the monthly card, which I recommend, it's a good deal. Then you also get the privileges shop here. Uh, these are just kind of good deals, like your Elite Teleport, which you can get for 1600 You can also buy that for the same price in the black market, but you can get it here as well. Um, this is also where you'll find some short tutorials, but you're watching my videos, so you'll be getting a better explanation about all this stuff. So next up is the Command Center. So I'll be doing a more deep dive into officers, but this is where you do everything officer related. Um, so on the left here we've got our officer skills. So this is an overview of all your skills that you have on your officers, and then all the ones that you have um, that haven't been put on officers. So you can break them down if you haven't used them. Uh, this will give you officer skill books, so I recommend building out your officer fragments and then breaking down into skill books and then upgrading your officer skills. So now that we've done that, we can come over to our warfare and say upgrade our long range attack. So you just kind of trade your less useful skills into your more useful skills. Also on our skills page is our fuse skills, so when you get fragments, this is where you'll come to fuse them. Um, click this button and then you can fuse all of them faster. And again, if you don't need them, then you'll just break them down and use them on your useful skills. Uh, the next tab over is your officer's page, so this is where you can apply experience, you can start up your officers, you can see your uh, breakthrough skills, you can share to your alliance or nation if you want to brag, um, you can click our little information button and read about officers, but this is also where you can remove officers, you'll be doing this a lot, when you go to build buildings, you'll want to put these two on, then you'll go back to your main officers. Um, here on the bottom left is your reset. A lot of people don't know about that button right there. So if you've uh, put a bunch of XP in officers that you shouldn't have, then you can go reset back to a lower level. To our strategy tab, we will have different officers. Your war tab. If, uh, Clicking through a lot of these to see like which one you want to scale up, you can hit that I button and then you can quickly go through and you know see okay your long range attack is level 13 where everybody else is higher so that's the one that I'll want to boost next. Come back to your point screen, this is also where you can appoint officers, um, see your boosts. and by the hot officer for the day. Um, a different officer is each day of the week, so if you want to buy officers, you'll have to learn the um, shop schedule. Um, I don't use the point screen that much. Um, I feel like it's faster to come into your officer screen and hit the remove button here. Um, then to come into the other screen and do it this way. See, I feel like this is more more button pressing. So I don't use this screen at all. The last tab is recruit officers. This is where you'll do your normal recruit and your uh, elite recruit, you'll be doing this a lot. You get free recruits every single day. So you should be coming in here at least three times a day to get your three normal free recruits. Let's see if I get anything good. Um, butterfly, Doc, Godfather, not bad. I can sell those ones off. Um, here's the exchange rates so that you know what you're gambling on when you're opening those. Um, next on our list is the garage. Um, if we go to info, you can see that the garage uh, dictates your troops units limit. We call this our fleet size. 
bigger garage means bigger fleet size, so this is a very important building. I recommend updating your garage right after you do your city hall, so you get to see 31 city hall, you go to or main hall, then you upgrade your garage next. Um, you can see the boost here that you get for each level. Um, If we come back to our upgrade screen, it just tells you your resources that you need. Now your fleet army is where you can set up your fleets. This will show you your idle units, which will be important later in your fleet queues, uh, just to know how many troops are in your city at the time and how many are wounded at the time. Um, make sure that you're not fighting if you have uh, a full wounded units. You'll be killing your troops instead of sending them to the hospital. But you can click on an army and set it or reset it. Um, look through your troops. Uh, see the distribution of front, mid, and backline troops. Um, in your reg, you also have technologies. And this is where you upgrade and unlock your fleet queues. So I think level... It's something low, like 5, 9, 12, 19, something like that, is when you upgrade your fleet queues and then your VIP 7. Also, your researches, uh, your rescue is about the most important uh, research in the game, so rush that as fast as you can. Um, that's it for Garage. So, next up will be our Titan. I'll probably do a deep dive video on the Titan as well later, but coming into our Titan, um, you can change your Titan name if you want. Um, I just have mine set as my name, you can see your disaster tier and your power on your top left there. We can also share this with our Alliance of the Nation, so we can brag. Uh, clicking on our skills here at the bottom, we can see what level our attacks are at. This is like our main destruction tier um, skill. If we want to upgrade our vitality, we can use our mutant meat. If we want to upgrade our, our evolution, then we can use our energy jars and our source spirit DNA. Um, this will be where you can see your talents that you'll get once you upgrade or, your, or once you evolve your Titan. Uh, we can come back and go to our talent screen where you can see all of your talents and upgrade them. Um, for Titans, you kind of want to specialize the skills that do all armies. So. Um, you'll see for our Empress, she has a skill that increases total attack of all the allies. So that's uh, what you want to rush for when you're upgrading um, your Titans. So we can see this skill increases the total defense and total HP, so that's a good one. Um, total attack of all allies so that's a good one this just increases your titan defense so not as good and uh, see this makes a shield which is good because that affects all allies if we come back here so this is just an attack uh, this is more damage to attack more attack and this one actually makes a shield for and increases your HP and defense of all allies so that's a very useful one so you'll want to get rush that one as well but your first one you should be rushing is your Queen's Inspiration and the boost for it um, what else? We also have Titan skins. I don't have any of these activated yet. Uh, my Titans aren't very powerful. But these are available. Eventually, on the next evolution, 
These will also cost a mut mutagen stone or a golden skeleton, so there are more upgrades costs once you get to the uh, next tier. Um, other than that, you get your first titan at level 5, and you get your second titan, I believe, at 12, at, um, or no, 19, I believe, is when you get your second titan. Um, they both uh, will join in defense of your city, but they will both not be able to attack uh, with your fleet until you're level 24, C24, so that's a milestone that you want to rush for. But I always upgrade the Titan to get the beam, uh, your destroy ray, and then once he has the destroy ray, you can upgrade or evolve him to get the fire path, and then start working on your Empress until you get your Queen's Inspiration and the Potent Inspiration boost. And then you can really decide whether you want to continue with your Empress or your Source Spirit. Here you can choose to change so that your Queen or your Source Spirit displays in your city. Um, next off is going to be our stat station. Uh, this is going to be your ranking and your global conquest. Every single day there will be a reward here to collect, so make sure you collect your reward. This is also where you can go to see who's on top of your ranking for, like, officer, or if you want to see which alliance has the best benefit buildings, elite mines, territory. Um, not much at the stat station. Uh, we are not in Global Conquest yet, so that's not available. Just your globe and nation ranking. Also, when you go to a new world, um, say to Spy for Void War, this is really where you'll be going to look at their uh, stats. So it's good to see you know, the city ranking, to see who all has level 30 troops or level 26 troops, and the commander level rating to see who all has uh, slaughter or SOS and officer ranking to see who's got that long range attack bonus all right next we'll be doing our event building next to our main hall here so this is the same as this button here in the bottom left um, so you don't really click on your event building much since you could just use that shortcut But it just takes you to your event screen where you can browse all your events uh, Next up is the merchant docks. So this is where you can collect your daily reward Although this screen pops up when you log in so just collect it there um, This is also where you go to do your black market trade. So this is the important part. You'll be doing this every day as well I'll do a deep dive into the black market on a different video, but I do recommend using the black market and abusing the black market. This is where you'll get ahead. This is where you'll save money, or I guess not save money, but you'll spend your gold and money very efficiently. So make sure that you use the black market. Um, it starts off at 10 for a gold refresh, and it will shortly go up to 100. If you're not a power player, I at least recommend refreshing this a couple times a day just to get the good rewards. Um, some of this stuff is rare to get in other places, and this is kind of the only place you can get it, so the black market is your friend. Next up we have the depot. Um, the depot saves your resources, so if you get attacked, this is kind of like your uh, buffer. Um, you also get free resources by having a higher depot level. Um, see the amount of resources protected? It's really not much. Um, it's about a day of gathering, so it's not the most important building but every day you do get to do the resource sale, which I recommend doing on Power Ore. 
Um, I did a quick calculation um, showing the prices of these. So this is actually the quickest or the cheapest place to buy power ore uh, up to a certain limit. So I think for me, if I buy up to say about 20 gold a day, then that's better than me buying bulk power ore. So this is where I buy power ore. Next up, we've got the recon center. Uh, so recon center dictates your scouting and what your scouts do. So different levels of recon kind of unlock different things in your scout reports, um, allowing you to see different troops, different info, equipment, officers, the uh, amount of troops, troop levels. Um, higher levels, it just makes your scout go faster, which is also nice. Um, you'll be doing a lot of scouting, and scouting takes forever. I do recommend uh, keeping your recon center up to par. Um, there's some boosts like uh, 19 where you can do your defense troop types and the exact numbers. That's very helpful. And then at um, 29 when you can scout the officer info, that's also very helpful. And then you can tell who's uh, got the long range attack and see if you really want to attack them or not. Um, you can also set your alert levels here. So if you want to set a pest block, say if somebody's transported a city into the corner of the map and is attacking you with zombies, then you can set your pest block here. All this is in your settings as well. It's just a, a, a quick screen to get to it. and notifications yeah um, that's it for our recon center next up are houses so houses just help you get to your prosperity level each house will give you an increase in your refugee limit there is a max prosperity level so you don't actually have to make all of your houses out to the max level although I guess you could just to increase your refugee limit but I'm already at the max level, so I don't see a reason to at the moment. Um, keeping your houses to the highest prosperity is very helpful, because then you get all these boosts, including your attack and HP boosts, but I really like the building speed and the gather boosts as well. You can go to the ruins to actually get your refugees, so you'll do them here in the refugee rescue, which I recommend doing anyway, even if you've already got max refugees just for the commander experience. But as you can see, I have my buildings all at 28, except for two of them at 29, and I have the max prosperity level. Once you get attacked, some of your refugees will leave your city, and then you'll have to go do that refugee rescue again to get your uh, prosperity level back up. So if you have farms, you'll be doing that a lot. Um, emptying your city of resources, going and getting refugees again. Um, so just keep your houses tip-top, keep your prosperity level open to get those boosts. Uh, next up we've got the academy. So this is where you'll do all of your research. I might do a deep dive into the academy in a different video. Um, but you can see here in the description is all of the bonuses that you have from your research. You can also cancel research here. Um, you only get battle power for upgrading your academy. But you come into your research you have four different fields resources development defense and military obviously if you're a war city then military is going to be your most important tab if you're a farm city then you'll really just be doing a couple things in development and then you'll be sticking most of your time in the resources tab um, and then you'll not be putting anything in the defenses tab since you'll be stealing those resources from your war city um, if you're a war city you obviously want your defenses 
and you want your military and you want your development. Um, I recommend doing your research uh, booths as soon as they're available because they help every other research. Also as soon as you can make sure you're doing your first aid. This is probably the most important research. So make sure you have your wounded conversion done. It's the same one that we do in the garage. Another tip here is to never research spelunking. It will make you never able to win the gathering event and strongest commander. Um, your leadership is probably the most important military because it increases your fleet size. Um, you'll be doing your long range weapons. Expansion and draft are also very important so you can recruit more of those powerful troops. Other than that, you'll be focusing on your long range and then your melee. Do your mid last. Um, next up's our hospital. Hospital is where you treat your wounded troops. Uh, you can see your hospital limit here. Your hospital limit is also dictated by your medic centers and your healing speed as well. Um, so make sure you keep your hospital upgraded with your main hall. I recommend doing main hall and then garage and then hospital for your upgrades. Um, also keep your medic centers tip top. Um, I'll cover these in a second, but they also dictate your wounded limit units limit. Um, when you upgrade your hospital, you cannot uh, recover any troops, so a lot of people save all their speeds so that you can uh, speed along your hospital and then get back to recovering troops. Um, it could be bad if you're upgrading your hospital and you get attacked, and then <laughs> you don't have any speed boost to uh, com complete your hospital and then your hospital fills up with wounded troops and then all of your troops that are wounded afterwards are dead so you don't want to be stuck in this situation so make sure you can speed your hospital along or you have a peace shield active so you can't be attacked um, always ask your teammates to help you um, recover your troops It'll go along a lot faster. You'll be doing events like Doom, where you have to attack ten times. Um, you can heal your troops between to get even, you know, bigger damage bonuses. So just ask your teammates, join a good active alliance so that they help you out. Um, remember that recovering troops costs resources, so always try to use the best fleets. Um, so that you minimize your healing time and minimize the um, amount that you have to spend on troops. You can also um, use first aid skill, so this will help you get a better wounded ratio. You can also use uh, advanced medicine with Brave Star to get your max wounded up. And you can also use the medicine skill to increase your healing speed. Good, I needed that on him. Next up we have our embassy. Uh, embassies where you'll do all of your alliance related quests for the day. Um, accept your uh, packages when people get their daily diligence rewards or buy presents. Um, I just recommend coming in here and doing this right before server reset, that we don't have to collect all these individually. Let's see, here's your daily diligence rewards. You'll be collecting those quite often. Um, while you're upgrading your embassy, you cannot uh, use the animation to click on the city to help allies, so you can come into your alliance tab and help your allies here. Um, as you upgrade your embassy, this allows more reinforcements to get into your city. 
so you have a better defense. It also upgrades your help times, which I was just talking about. Um, yeah, 39 people helping, and we get over a minute for each help time, so that's like an hour off anything you do if you have a very active alliance, which is very helpful. Uh, you can see that you just get more defenses and more help times as you upgrade. There we go, help more allies. So, alliance gift. You can also choose to send your gift anonymously. So this is if you buy things in the shop from this shop, then each time you buy, you get this little small alliance gift. So that will either show your name there or it will show anonymous. Uh, in the defenses tab, this is where you can see where you are uh, defending other people. Your reinforcements on other people's city will be on the outpost defenses people reinforcing your city will be in your city defenses. Uh, this is a useful tab because you can kick people out of your city or you can recall all of your uh, reinforcements. Say you're in uh, Battle Frenzy and you have all of your troops hidden and somebody's reinforcing your city because you're getting attacked but you don't want to be uh, reinforced, you just want them to hit an empty city, then you can come in here and kick them out of your city. So very, very useful tab. Um, next up are going to be our troop buildings. So we've got our camp and our factory and our workshop. Uh, this is just rebuild troops. Uh, you get power bonuses, where you, or not power bonuses, you get uh, troops unlocked at different levels so here you can see which levels you unlock the different troops so these are going to be your power spikes so your snipers are the important long-range troop from your camp so you can see that at level 16 you get your T6 sniper and at 22 you get your T8 sniper and at 30, you get your T10 snipers. And then if you keep playing <laughs> at 36, eventually uh, you'll get your T12 snipers. Um, so those are your big uh, boosts that you want to jump to. Since you have two buildings, if you upgrade one of them to uh, the level, so you can see one of mine is at 30 and one's at 24 being upgraded, but uh, once I have one at 30, then I can upgrade or I can recruit those T10 troops from this building. Uh, I still cannot recruit them from this building. It actually has to be at that level. Although a strategy is to use your promote building, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, from your camp, same kind of general thing. Uh, different levels will do different troops. Uh, these, your long range from your factory are kind of the off levels from your uh, camp, so you'll be get, getting different power spikes. So here you get a power spike at 13 for your intermediate cannon, uh, T5s, your 19 as your T7, the uh, 26 is those T9 cannons, which are very powerful. Um, and then at 34 you get your uh, T11 cannons. And then in our, actually the other thing here is going to be your shredders. Uh, shredders and tanks, which shredders you get at the off levels of your cannons, tanks you get at the same levels, so those will be your front line. You can cancel the recruit right there. I didn't know that. Okay. Learn something every day. Uh, here in the workshop, these are just your more powerful troops. Again, we just do front line and back line. So you'll be rushing your armored soldiers and your enhanced EMP cannon. Uh, people have trouble distinguishing between the EMP cannon and the regular cannon. Um, I call them like the laser EMP. Sometimes it helps people distinguish, sometimes it doesn't. Um, 
we recommend not using any of these EMP cannons and attacks unless you aren't going to be losing troops such as in Frenzy or Elite War. Um, they are very brittle until your T10 cannons um, and they'll die very easily in attacks, but they're great for defense, so you can keep your armored soldiers and your AMP cannons for defense. Um, next up is going to be our dispatch center. So the dispatch center uh, controls your rally units. So rallying is used for attacks when you want to get everybody on the same bus and take them uh, across town and go attack somebody. Um, this is also useful for your um, big attacks when you're doing the city battles so you can get more reinforcements in the city also useful for your daily ruins um, you need a maximum amount of units to get the maximum amount of waves in your ruins so your people will be asking for people with a big bus and this is what they're talking about so I have a 1.6 million bus so that's a pretty big bus you can see the different levels and different boosts. It gets pretty big. You can also increase your bus through your Lance technology in the um, team expansion. Or what is it? Rally organization. Team expansion allows more people. This allows more troops. So you can max out your bus um, with troops before you uh, max out with people. Um, that's about it for Dispatch Center. The only thing about Dispatch is it costs this uh, leader badge, which there's not very many places to get this. A lot of people just buy it with gold. Um, Again, this is one of those things that when you're doing the black market, you can keep an eye out and try to get some leader badges in here. This is also where you'll get your turret parts. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so next up, we've got our elite equipment facility. Uh, this one you'll be doing quite a bit. This is an important place to get good bonuses for stats. Um, I'll be doing a more deep dive into this facility because um, theory and ways to do it more efficiently um, more complicated but if you go to your overview tab here you can see all of your equipments you can see all of your boosts from all your equipment here um, if you go to your overview then you can see all of the extensions on your equipment. I'm missing a couple because I'm in the process of upgrading them. This is the screen that I like to use just because you can see all the levels and you can see you know what's advanced, or what's superior, and what's ultra, or what's potent. If I have a potent one. Um, it's just kind of a quick screen so you can say okay I want to upgrade you know this, this advanced to level 3. Um, also if you highlight then you can see all of the different um, percentages. So it's kind of a quick way to see uh, what those three are instead of doing this. If you go to the develop screen then this is where you'll develop your extensions. If you want to upgrade then you can upgrade them um, this way. So if I want to upgrade my weapons apparatus, then here we go. We can upgrade it. It will unequip it while we are doing our upgrade. And then you can see the percentage chance to get the uh, color upgrade. So right now I have a 71% chance to get that purple, but I really want that gold. So I will probably hold off for the now. Um, if I didn't want to upgrade it and I just wanted to change the color, I could come to my level 4 and attach my level 4 here. So now I have a little bit better chance of getting that gold. Um, you can kind of see if you're clever 
that by developing a level one, you have a much better chance of getting that gold. So it's better to do a level one, get it to gold, and then upgrade rather than doing what I did and bringing them all up and then trying to convert the color. But we'll go into that in more detail in another video. Um, if you come to your storage, this is just where you keep all your extra materials and then all of your extra equipment stuff. So if you want to break down stuff, you can disassemble it here, tell you how much extension components you're going to get. Once you get uh, too many of these lower level ones, you'll be breaking them down here. We don't need level 2 stuff anymore. We want our higher level 3 and 4. Here's our equipment screen. You'll be uh, melding materials a lot. Um, you can meld uh, and then click on another tab to meld again, but sometimes this doesn't update, so I find it quicker to just tab out every time than to wait on that animation. I don't know, that might be useful to somebody. Um, this is also, I think, the only place where you can see how many like extension components you have very quickly is to come to this screen, or on the top right, as well as your power ore up there. And um, for extension components, I recommend um, getting them from your tower defense, um, not here in your exchange store always go for these to get those level four fragments level three fragments level four fragments level three fragments and then um, go for the chest first and then go for the extension components uh, otherwise you'll end up with a lot of <laughs> level five potent extensions which you'll just be breaking down and it's kind of the same thing with the colors you want to get the level fours and then build up the level fours instead of taking the long route getting you'll get a better boost in the near term but you want that long term boost don't want to waste a bunch of time um so next we've got our resource buildings so we've got let's see here we've got farms which does food you can see your food output We've got our oil refineries, which does our oil output. We've got our steel, which does our steel output. And our minerals for mineral output. Now you also have a uranium mining facility. This does not open until level 30. And then there's also a deep mining, which does not open until I believe 30 people in your world are level 30. Um, so you can see mine's not open yet. I can do the surface mining, but I cannot do the deep core mining. Uh, a couple things about buildings is you can move them. Um, so you can make all your city look pretty, move your buildings around. Um, you only get a limited amount of spots, so you have to decide on your buildings. Um, for a war city, you want eight of your medic stations, eight of your training grounds, and then you want six, which is the max of your mineral mine and steel mill, and then the remaining will just be four oil and for farm. On your farms you'll be doing uh, less of your training grounds and medic stations because troops don't matter as much and you'll have uh, four more of your oil and your farm buildings to get more production. Um, if you have all your buildings maxed like me then for like a strongest commander event you can always remove the building which will give you uh, some of your resources back um, for building it and then you have an empty spot which you can now build <laughs> to get your strongest commander points um, just remember to keep your 
uh, resource buildings up to par, especially mineral and steel. I don't do the uh, oil and food as much, because as you're attacking other cities, you'll be getting plenty of oil and food. Um, another thing is you can use your uh, speed up boosts, and so your production will have a bonus on it. Um, as you can see, I've got 40 days of mineral mine production bonus, so I just have that basically on all the time and you'll be getting those production bonuses from the black market. I guess you can also buy them from the shop, but I don't recommend it since you can um, get them from the black market and just use your dollars to buy them. Um, the training grounds, this is probably the most important of these little buildings because it increases your recruitment and your recruitment speed so you get more troops for the same amount of time. I always try to keep these the same as my city level or my camp level just to keep making troops. Troops are very important. Um, along with these are going to be your medic stations. Also keep these tip top because they allow you to have more wounded troops. So if you get attacked and they kill all of your troops, then you can keep more of them. As you can see, I can keep about 300,000 troops, uh, which is good. So you can see your hospital doesn't give you everything. It only gives you that 31,000. So the rest of those are coming from your uh, bonuses and all of these medic stations. So what, eight times 15? Oh, what good. Oh, I can't do math. 120,000 troops saved from having those up. So that's like half a fleet. That's a few months of recruiting. So make sure that you have those medic stations up. They'll save you one day. Next up, we've got our distribution center. So this is where you'll collect your daily total diligence reward. Um, you can see that you get these points by doing different things. You'll be doing these daily, so don't really worry about coming in here and actually fulfilling this. You'll just do it through all your other activities. You just have to come in and grab your reward, which is good. So you get the Z coins and the elite recruitment. Um, more importantly, you're going to be using the exchange store here. Um, Basically, you want to sell all of your low-level officers and some of your blue officers, and you're just up-trading for purple officers. So we don't need any of these. Uh, we'll keep those. I like to keep Ginger and Hacker and Barney. And I sell the rest of them. Um, if you're a free player, you might want to keep your uh, butterfly, maybe your Jesse. Um, maybe a couple of these other ones, but hopefully you can trade up for purple officers. Um, butterfly is better than Aeon for a long time but then Aeon eventually will become more powerful, so you'll be selling all your butterflies. So if you're a power player, then just go ahead and sell butterfly. If you're a free player, you might want to hang on to her for a while. And then you'll want to be trading up for purple officers. And then you'll also want to be grabbing your officer XP. If you want to, you can grab your leader badges from here. I think sometimes there's turret parts. Maybe not in here. I can't remember. I don't buy any of this other junk. Um, I will buy materials. But you will run out of the Z coins, so I recommend not using gold to refresh. Maybe just 10 gold. Um, don't spend too much gold because you'll run out of Z coins way before you need to refresh that gold a bunch of times to spend your Z coins. So just wait 
uh, it refreshes every eight hours, so it's three a day. And um, yeah, you'll run out of Z coins before you use all that up. Next up, we've got our tower defense post. So this is where you'll be doing your classic zombies. Um, I might go into a deep dive and show how to beat all these to get three stars on all of them. But as you increase your city power, all of your stats will go up and then these will all get easier. So no worries if you can't beat it at the beginning, just uh, you know, wait six months and then you can beat them all. I don't even know if I've actually played all these on hard difficulty. Maybe I have. No, I haven't even beat 21 yet, so maybe I should go do that. Uh, you'll also be doing your uh, infinite zombies every day here. So, um, this is kind of a weekly thing. Uh, every week, everybody will compete and have a high score. You get a ranking. That 50,000 commander XP for first place is pretty nice, as well as all those coins and speed ups. Um, speed ups are awesome. So try to do well in this. Uh, also, kind of a tip is you can come in here to your challenge. I guess mine's already done for the day, but that's where you can buy armaments. I recommend uh, stocking up on armaments for the whole week. And then the day of the reset, try to use all your best armaments and get the best score you can. And then you can use the auto feature every other day and just collect your coins. That way you're really only playing Dire Defense once a week and not playing this every single day. Um, try to get your officer and equipment powered up to boost those rockets and lasers. We really don't use machine guns. Um, armament store so buy these every day if they're on sale to help you for later nothing's on sale today and I don't really like the energize so I won't buy anything uh, you can refresh but again I don't think it's worth it save your gold for so something else just check this every single day see if there's something good in there do your weekly once save up all your coins and then make sure to buy these chests Uh, yeah, the only thing in here I would buy is the blueprint chest and then the extension components and then maybe one day you'll have those maxed out and then you can buy your officer XP. You can always buy officer XP. Alright, so next we've got our city wall. Uh, this has a couple different uses. Uh, one is it does your defense limit, which kind of means, um, I guess really it's like your city hit points, but really if your city runs out of hit points, then you're, nothing happens, you just get teleported. That way if somebody like teleports next to you and attacks you a bunch of times, then just eventually you'll teleport away from them. Um, so here's your city defense. If people attack you, then your city will get up, catch on fire. So you can come here to extinguish the fire. If your city's burning, then it does, I believe, negative 60 an hour. Um, so obviously that beats out your recovery speed. It's also not recovering while it's on fire. So you can put out the fire and then your city will start recovering again. Um, you can also use gold to just recover it instantly. But if you're not being attacked over and over again, you can just let it uh, recover normally. So you don't have to spend gold on that. Um, other thing in here is your defense towers. So you have some natural defense on your city, which are these four towers. And you can upgrade them. Uh, they do cost turret parts, which you can buy using gold. You can also get those in the black market, so I recommend getting them there. These aren't the most important. Hopefully you weren't getting attacked a lot and you're doing more attacking or you're hiding your troops so that somebody's hitting an empty city. Um, so just kind of upgrade these as you get the turret parts. I wouldn't really spend a whole lot of time or money upgrading your 
a wall, just kind of do it naturally. Um, you do have to upgrade it to upgrade your main hall. I think it's required for every single uh, upgrade. So you do upgrade your wall right away. It's kind of main hall, garage, hospital, hall. So you're kind of going to be your order. Um, but it does add a little bit of um, defense if somebody attacks you. And again, once you get this defense towers boosted, then you can come in here and do all your research and then get those towers doing a little bit more damage. Um, next up we've got our managed troops, which is where you do your promotions. Uh, this is just another place where you can check out your fleet army. Again, you can do that in your garage. Um, but I guess you can't see, but this is where you promote your troops. We'll just boost this along so we can check it out. Uh, troop promotion. So different units can do different amounts. So I know like shredders, you can only do 200 at a time. Your cannons, you can do 400 at a time. Uh, snipers, you can do 2,000 at a time. Um, so we just like to keep our troops promoted. Um, again, you'll be using your troop promotion along with your different city or camp factory levels to get different troops. So your camp, you'll be making your T-10 snipers at 30, but this camp will still be at 22. So you'll still have him at 22 making your T-8 snipers, and then you'll be promoting your T-8 snipers to T-10. So that's kind of how you'll do that. And then you don't have to upgrade both of these buildings right away. You can just um, make snipers here, promote them here, and then you're uh, using all of your buildings efficiently, because if you're not you have all of these making T10s at the highest level, then you have nothing to promote, so you're not using this function at all. So make use of all your buildings. Uh, last building is going to be a our biochem. Uh, I might do a deep dive of this one later as well. There's a lot going on in this building. Um, hitting our info, this just shows you all of your boosts for your uh, zombie troops. Um, here on the right at our biochem workshop is where you'll make your zombie troops. This is where you also choose whether they defend your city or not. Uh, I choose not to because you want to save your zombie troops. Uh, you can see I don't have very many. I have about what, a fourth of what I could have. Um, so try to keep your zombie troops at max. It's super helpful for events. Like your Medici. Um, always make the max level zombie. Uh, zombies use that uh, biochem material so it's kind of a rare commodity. You can only get 30k a day. Uh, there's a method for getting biochem material where you sacrifice troops. Um, that might be in my advanced video. So keeps, keep your zombie troops recruited. Um, here in your Biochem Hospital is where you will uh, recover troops. You can see that you only have a certain amount of nutrients that you can have at a time. So once you recover those, then you have to wait to recover more. You can hit the little plus here, which will open up this menu where you can use your serums to uh, you know, add in nutrients. Uh, so eventually you'll have your women all healed and you don't need these anymore. Uh, so then the only use for them is just speeding along the healing of these biochem troops. Um, here you can see your conversion rate. This is those researches. You want to keep those tip top so that way you convert the most amount of units and save your units, save your troops. They're super important. Um, coming back to our treatment room. You'll be coming here a lot as you do your heals. Um, rush this along so you can stop doing this. Get these ladies healed all the way up. Save those serums. Uh, this is where you'll be doing your intimacy and talking to the ladies, answering questions. Um, I'll try to put the answers somewhere so you don't have to memorize all those like I did. 
But make sure you come in here and use your skill every single day. Make sure you do your explorers every single day. Try to go for either elite teleports or officers in your um, in your explorers. Try to get those uh, 500 XP packs. Maybe try to get the extension components and power ore. But I try to go for elite teleports or um, officers. Officers are your friend. Um, they added this, so this is your biochem technology tree, so as you upgrade your, or get through your, I guess, intimacy, then you get more points, so you can come in here and do these skill trees. They just give you bonuses to your zombie troops. Same thing on this screen. Check out how far you are. Again almost done uh, save all your gifts for the alliance bounty quest also sometimes you'll get a little notice uh, all you have to do is come in here and collect the gifts it's a kind of annoying little pop-up um, I think that's it for our buildings video I think I touched on all of them a couple of them I will be going into further detail on because there's just a lot to them. A lot of them are pretty simple though. You'll just be clicking in and doing the same things over and over again. Um, collecting rewards, making more troops, um, doing researches. So it's not a lot to them. Just a couple of things that I wanted to show. Um, cover all the questions and whatnot so hopefully you found this useful and maybe you learned something about the buildings all right everybody I think that's it for today be safe out there and remember this is a game so have fun and as always the shameless plug at the end of the video if you guys wouldn't mind liking the video sharing it subscribing leave in a comment whatever you can do to help me out hope you liked it and hope you learned something